Okay, so welcome to this uh, first live session uh, for the uh, course uh, this semester on uh, plastic waste management. So the way we, as uh, uh, if you may have attended previous live sessions as well, the way we take uh, the like some of the courses that you, uh, some of the questions that you have posted on uh, uh, the Dropbox link that was provided to you. So we will uh, take those uh, uh, questions first, and then uh, as you. Uh, uh, post more questions on the chat box. So those of you who are online, chat, you can start posting questions on chat box and we'll be taking those questions as well. So let's get started with the questions that came uh, through the submission process online. Uh, so the first question I have uh, with me, uh, this is uh, from uh, Rudri J. Vaidya and the question is how can we recycle microplastic? So recycling of microplastic uh, is uh, kind of very difficult because you have to capture it. And capturing of microplastic uh, is uh, the most difficult part. But what we need to look at is uh, we, sh we can prevent the microplastic from getting into the environment. So if you can recycle the regular plastic, say what, what causes microplastic? There are uh, two, three aspects of it. Number one is all those single use plastic that we use. And when they are not managed properly, they get into the environment, they break down. Uh, when they get into the surface water, they, with the surface currents of oceans and everything, it gets break down and then finally we have these microplastics sewing up in the water bodies, especially in ocean. So if you can recycle, if you can prevent it from happening at the first place, so if you can recycle those plastic, bag, plastic uh, uh, stuff, we can manage it properly, those which cannot be recycled, at least put it in a secure environment, use in waste to energy plants. So those uh, will prevent the microplastic uh, getting into the environment, that's one aspect. And the other aspect is there are certain microplastics are used in certain uh, products. Uh, as you have probably, if you remember from the video lectures, we talked about that uh, we have uh, a, scrub, a scrub that you use in your face, uh, some of the even toothpaste, and uh, there are several other project, uh, products which uses microplastic. And uh, the way to stop it will be kind of minimize the use and gradually actually phase out the use of microplastic as many countries have done, which we talked about in the video as well. So that's the way to control it. And uh, recycling of microplastic, if we can capture it, if it's in an industrial scale, if we can capture those microplastic, then it can be recycled back uh, based on the type of plastic uh, and it can be used. Otherwise, when it's out in the environment, it's very difficult to capture and, and recycle them. So I hope that uh, that answers your question. Uh, the second question uh, is from uh, Y Akhil Sarath. And uh, his question is, is PLA plastic uh, products are good alternative to conventional single use plastic? Uh, he says that he has read an article in the Hindu newspaper that bioplastic is not going to help in reducing plastic pollution as it also ends up in landfill and don't degrade as they require certain conditions to degrade. At last, uh, it also pollutes the nature. Another question is, uh, uh, so we'll take the first question first and then we'll talk about the second question. So in terms of PLA, uh, PLA is considered as the bioplastic. So yes, what you are saying is correct. Uh, there is certain, uh, it's, uh, we can say the answer is both yes and no. Is it a good alternative? Yes, to some extent, as long as if we can make products of 100% biodegradable plastic. The problem which I also highlighted during the lectures is that uh, many of these plastic products which contains biodegradable plastic also has traditional plastic there, those fossil fuel based plastics. So it's a mixture of the two. So in, when, they, when they become mixture of the two, it becomes very difficult to recycle. So this uh, traditional recycling methods, uh, for them, this bioplastic becomes a contaminant. And for, uh, for the bioplastics which is mixed with the traditional plastic in the same product, this uh, it becomes it cannot be used in a compost plant. So and whenever it goes to a compost plant, as you mentioned, it, it requires a specific kind of temperature. So it doesn't really work in a home composter if you want to set up your home actual your own home compost uh, in your backyard or in your balcony, and you want to do this composting of uh, bioplastic. Many times they don't degrade. So it's uh, but if we can move towards 100% PLA based plastic. 
it will be a positive move. So there is, uh, so there is kind of a plus and minuses of both. So that kind of I think uh, answers your question. Yes, if uh, other thing that you mentioned that bioplastic if cannot be recycled, if it goes to landfill, part of it which will degrade will create methane gas. And if you don't keep manage this uh, uh, bioplastics properly in uh, in a landfill environment, we'll have uh, methane getting into the atmosphere as well. So, so. See, whenever we go for a solution, we have to look at a whole systems perspective that we talked about in our uh, lecture videos as well. Second question he has that I have read an article on plastic road that are constructed using shredded plastic. In the process, plastic is heated at certain temperature and mixing with bitumen while heating the plastic releases a certain greenhouse gas, which is harmful for nature. So is a good alternative. So is it a good alternative as it also releases greenhouse gas uh, and, and also after some wear and tear of roads, the plastic inside road comes out in the environment as microplastics. So is it good to use plastics in road? Um, we exactly like uh, if you uh, like if you watched uh, this particular video, maybe it's uh, this week or maybe it will come. Probably maybe it will come in the next week. We answered these questions in the lecture video in great detail, uh, where we talked about this plastic road issues, uh, uh, plastic uh, being used in road uh, construction. Uh, yes, the, if we don't uh, control the burning of plastic uh, with the bitumen, uh, if there is no control atmosphere, the emissions that got out of get outs of that. Will will have certain greenhouse gas, but that greenhouse gas is there in regular plastic, regular uh, bitumen road as well. So it's not that uh, plastic is creating uh, additional uh, greenhouse gases uh, being produced. Uh, so those gases is already there. So it's it's the same. Uh, in terms of your second part of the question, there is worry uh, that uh, plastic. Uh, uh, will uh, as, as the wear and tear of the roads, we may get microplastic getting into the surface water and uh, to the nearby soil and may if there is agricultural field, it may get into the soil, it may potentially get into the plants as well. But those are again, uh, we do not have the data right now uh, to say either way whether it is happening or not happening, but it is possibility. In certain lab conditions uh, uh, with accelerated weathering of roads, people have seen that to be a possibility. So that may happen. Uh, so yes, that's a concern. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a plastic is a good binder. So see whatever whatever activities you do, there are always will be pros and cons and you have to do an environmental risk assessment of that to see that yes, how much plastic can we add. Uh, so that the, even if microplastic gets released, that will not be of much of a concern because uh, that will be of very low concentration out there. So those uh, so those kind of studies needs to be done before you uh, kind of jump up and do a great deal of uh, uh, use of plastic in road construction. Uh, unfortunately, many times uh, we get carried away by certain. Uh, if we if we find a solution and then we jump onto that solution without looking at uh, big picture risk assessment associated with that, and when it that creates a problem uh, as well. So your concerns are totally genuine, and uh, these aspects needs to be looked into. But that doesn't mean that you cannot use plastic in uh, in road construction. We can still use it, but we have to limit how much we can use so that even if there is a release that is negligible and that's within the uh, background concentration, that's not high enough to cause problem. Uh, so those things needs to be looked into. Next question is from uh, Ravindranath. Uh, his question is uh, using plastic waste to uh, brick uh, and biogas. It's very used in India. Uh, I'm not really sure like the sentence, it's not totally complete. So I'm not 100% uh, uh, sure that what you are trying to say. If you are online, please uh, rephrase this question and put it there. But uh, if I understand you are saying using plastic waste for bricks, it is being done. Uh, again, plastic being flammable, it can catch fire. So even if you use for brick, you should put a layer of uh, uh, concrete or cement uh, concrete mixture uh, so that it, it's a fireproofing needs to be done. And then the strength is also a question, how much uh, uh, strength it will bear compared to the traditional bricks. People have people are using uh, plastic bricks. Uh, in fact, in uh, if you go to south uh, in Cochin, uh, that's, I have seen it myself uh, in uh, that Amrita University medical campus. So they are using uh, plastic bricks. Uh, they have used uh, compressed plastic and then they put a layer of cement and concrete with it and then they use it for uh, fence wall or security posts. So only single storied building, not uh, small, uh, not load bearing walls, too much load bearing. So those things they are using it uh, for that. So it is being used and it has been used elsewhere too. 
Uh, plastic to biogas, I don't know what you're talking about. So please rephrase that question, then we can uh, be able to answer that. Unless it's a biodegradable plastic that you're talking about, will plastic will not, like traditional plastic, the fossil fuel based plastic will not produce biogas. Uh, biodegradable plastic, yes, it, can, it will produce biogas when it's uh, degrading in an anaerobic environment. Uh, next is from Arun Vel M. How can we segregate the plastic waste from other waste in an institution? Is there any funding agency available for this effective plastic waste management for educational institutions? Uh, how can we segregate? Again, uh, you have to uh, do the source segregation. You have to have a separate container where the plastic waste is put separately as opposed to other waste. And uh, if you have taken a solid waste course before, uh, if uh, you know that uh, as per MSW management rules 2016, we have to have wet and dry separate uh, collection. And the dry waste will essentially, plastic will be in the dry waste bin. And from there, which uh, will have plastic, paper, metals, glass, and other stuff, you can easily take the plastic out. So that's way it will be to separate it. And if you have not taken a solid waste management course, uh, there will be a course offered uh, on NPTEL platform starting in July. You should register for that to get more information if you are interested in that area. Uh, in terms of any funding agency available for this effective plastic waste management, I don't know of, I don't think so. Uh, at least uh, for educational institution, we usually look for, mostly we are looking at MHRD funding or MOEF funding, DST, DBT and all those different uh, funding agencies. Mostly they are for research purposes. So this will be the job of, uh, uh, like uh, the educational institution has to come up with their own budget uh, to do this kind of uh, program. If uh, if you need, uh, like a, sometimes if there is a company nearby which has some CSR money, they may be able to help you. But I don't think of any separate funding mechanism for this kind of stuff. Next question is from Seri, uh, uh, which it, uh, question is, why can't we suggest a tax on all environmental risk generating products to ensure recycling uh, products eventually are cheap and common sense approach? So if I understood again this question, uh, uh, like English phrase is a bit off, but uh, so essentially what he's, he or she is trying to say that we can put a tax on all environmental risk uh, generating products uh, to, to basically generate money. So it's kind of uh, uh, what uh, uh, after hazardous waste rules uh, uh, came into being, there was a tax proposed in US in terms of the Superfund uh, tax. Similarly, the, uh, around the world, there are taxes uh, which people have to pay. The concept of uh, extended producer responsibility also comes with a similar background where uh, there is uh, that the company has to manage it. So, is it uh, is it a? Uh, there are some places where tax is put. For example, uh, uh, for. Uh, if you are in Europe or in Canada, for when you buy electronics, they charge you a waste disposal fee. When you go for a tire, you have they charge a tire disposal fee. Similar price, similar mechanism is also there in Indian market, but it's not explicit. It's kind of inbuilt, so we don't really see it, but it is there. So we do pay for all the stuff because as a consumer, we end up paying it. So whenever there is a tax on the producer, ultimately we have to pay as a consumer. So that's, uh, those mechanism is there, yes, for better, sometimes uh, the money doesn't flow properly and then it doesn't come to the right program, but those mechanism is already in place. And those people are working in terms of regulation along that line globally. Uh, next is from Kavita Rao, uh, uh, question, sir, CSIR IIP is working on converting waste plastic into fuel and she also shares a link with us. Uh, so we looked at that link. Uh, it's, uh, we did find that, yes, uh, there is uh, CSIR IIP is working with uh, Gale uh, to develop plastic into fuel. And, uh, and there was a question in Lok Sabha and which was uh, uh, replied by the minister as well, uh, Science and Technology Minister Y.S. Chaudhary uh, talked about this where one kilogram of the waste uh, polypropylene or poly, polyethylene can convert to around 600 ml of petrol or 700 ml of diesel. Uh, and some LPG as well. So it is a, again, this is a bench scale. Uh, there is a, it's still uh, work going on in the lab scale. Uh, it's uh, in a big scale, it has not come up. So it's uh, still in the lab stage right now. Yes, but there are work going on and there are similar work going on in other countries too. So I think that's what uh, her question was. I talked to a person at IIPC, explained me the complications in the process. Segregation is the main issue. Yes, that's, uh, that problem is there. 
like because all these any process uh, requires clean plastic so clean plastic means it should not have any dirt should not have any leftover food should not have any unwanted material other than plastic there so to clean it uh, source segregation is the only way to get a clean plastic into the system but uh, the problem is uh, source segregation has not been working very well and even people when they do the source segregation our collection system is not uh, efficient enough it's not uh, developed enough that things do get mixed up in the collection system too so that's the reason why this becomes a problem so i totally agree that uh, it's uh, the con contamination is a problem segregation is the issue and then her uh, next part is that my question is in india who are seriously working on co converting plastic waste into useful products uh, there are several companies which are listed actually if you look at uh, on uh, government websites and other places you will find or even uh, plastic uh, industry associations there are several companies more than 240 companies are registered uh, which are working on plastic recycling in india and some of them are also doing plastic to oil there was uh, i think we saw a video uh, in part of uh, one of the lecture uh, it was in nasik if i remember correctly and there are some uh, company in uh, south in tamil nadu as well so it's there are companies which are working on converting plastic to oil there are companies which are working on recycling of plastic so there are lots of companies which are out there which are working on uh, but some are economically still work uh, they, or they are listed uh, some are still working some uh, is no more economically viable again this source segregation contamination of plastic is what uh, is uh, bottom line if we can do that many of these uh, companies will can uh, do uh, like a good business next question is from sobhna p sir now we are talking about uh, recycling of plastic and stuff would it be applied to the waste which have been dumped a long ago in landfills will segregation only the major challenge to do that is there any other challenge which we have to recycle the landfill dumped plastic waste so when you take this uh, uh, landfill uh, dumped plastic waste there are two things you need to look at of course you need to take the plastic away or take the plastic from the other separate the plastic from the other waste which is there uh, dumped uh, so that will be number one second thing is you have to clean it uh, as just in the previous question you also you probably heard that uh, cleaning if it's a dirty plastic uh, many of the technologies doesn't work technology say technology even if it's a waste management technology say it's, it's a process it's an industrial process and for that process the feed is this waste plastic so it only wants plastic it does not want any other th any other thing it doesn't want leftover food with it it doesn't want dirt with it no soil so we have to uh, get Uh, we have to make it clean and uh, and that's where the challenge comes is to uh, get it cleaner enough for the process to be effective next question from mr sasang sharma uh, respected sir i'll be getting into integrated waste management with a special focus on electronic and plastic waste management initially i tend to start lucknow and uh, however my major cause of concern is that now i'm am i going to get enormous quantity of waste um Uh, electronic plastic msw uncategorized and unsettled waste what shall be my starting point from the angle of business feasibility uh see i am not a businessman i can help you in the technical point of view but yes i can give you some uh, in terms of uh, uh, major cause of concern is that how i'm going to get enormous quantity of waste you need to first of all look at how much waste is being produced in lucknow and surrounding areas so you based on uh, uh, that waste uh, quantification which we talk about in our other course not in this one in integrated waste management course uh, which is offered in during july we talk about how to quantify how much waste is being produced in a certain area so based on that and based on the pie chart uh, composition how much plastic how much electronic waste is there you can quantify you can quantify and there are books out there which tells you exactly how to do it so you have to do some sampling you have to come up with the waste composition you have to look at uh, uh, per capita rate you have to get the population data you have to have a future population projection and you do that math which we explain in that other course that you, you can find the youtube video of that as well it is there and there we go a step by step in terms of calculating and these information is there so that's the way to do it basically to get the population data get the individual waste quality quantity data from several areas within the city and then come up with total numbers and the pie chart and that pie chart gives you how much percentage plastic is there so based on that you can calculate the total quantity present 
And so based and then based on your market, you have to find what kind of market is there for recyclable product. You may come up with a business, but if there is no market for your product out there, then it, it will not be possible. So you need to identify the market where you will sell your product, what kind of product you can demand is there. So those things you need to look at. Um, in addition to previous query, I would like to guide me on what is a feasible business model. Uh, so I'm already employed with government, the money is not into the waste management, same time financial feasibility of business will not be ignored. Only recycling of electronic and plastic waste is better for volumetric collection or sorting is better or combination of these two is better in collection of waste and recycling as well. Kindly help in this regard using your knowledge and exposure. So again, you need to look at in um, uh, say it's a how much electronic waste is there, how much plastic waste is there. You need to look at all that. You need to look at how much it will. Uh, so there are companies out there which can give you some solution in terms of uh, uh, different uh, equipment that you will require. And uh, again, in that waste management course, we talk about those stuff as well. So the, what are the equipment is required for segregating the waste? And then if you want to recycle plastic, we talked about in this course. If you want to recycle electronics, we talked about in the electronic waste course. So you need to get all those informations together. And then based on that, you need to do a uh, financial uh, calculation that whether it is going to work or not. Uh, so that's I think that's what uh, I can say. Otherwise, it's a long, very... Uh, the question uh, requires a very, very long answer, but uh, this is what we can say. If you, is, if I would say good luck, and if you have any further questions, you put it on the discussion forum, and we'll try to answer that there. Um, so, name uh, next is uh, Gaurav Paul. Uh, hello, Professor Brajesh. I'm working for Ram Ramki Envirok Engineers Limited. We act as a PRO for many companies uh, like Tata Chemicals, JJ, and Tata Beverage, Amazon. As per EPR, which is the Extended Producer Responsibility, we give them service to collect multi-layered plastic waste from different regions of the state. Then we supply this multi-layered plastic to cement and waste to energy plant. I want to know, are there any other options available to dispose this MLP in anywhere in the world? Uh, people are also recycling MLP. Or what are the rules in regard to MLP that has to be followed stringently? Which are some major plastic recycling units in India? Okay. So in terms of multi-layered plastic, uh, it's... The problem with multi-layered plastic, as the name suggests, it's a multi-layered. So you have uh, not only one type of plastic there, there will be plastic, there could be paper, there could be aluminum foil, and there could be some other material in there as well. So depending on the type for which it is being designed. As you, many, uh, like, uh, many products, packaging products, uh, like your uh, cookies and uh, even uh, potato chips and different packaging, most of, many of the packaging uh, is done using this multi-layered plastic. These multi-layered plastics are also very good in terms of uh, getting a different uh, pattern, design, everything printed on them, which uh, looks cool on the product uh, package. So that's why it is being used. And since they are multi-layered, it's very difficult to recycle. Uh, you have to take all the different layers apart. Otherwise, one type of uh, uh, material there becomes contaminant for other type of material during the recycling process. So that's why waste to energy plant, although it doesn't have too much of recycling value, or recycling value is coming from plastic mostly and maybe some other uh, material there. So it does uh, cement and waste to energy plant kind of makes sense. Uh, if uh, any other options uh, for disposing, you can put it in, again, waste to energy plant or if you can, if uh, economically it makes sense, you can go for segregating those layers and go for recycling of individual parts. But that uh, does not, I don't think that's, it's economically feasible, at least in Indian sense right now. Uh, there are people, yes, people are recycling uh, multi-layer plastic, again, you have to separate different fractions. Uh, what are the rules? Uh, Multi-layered plastic uh, these days, uh, it's, uh, there is a uh, kind of goal of reducing its production. Uh, so that's uh, uh, rule is there. In terms of uh, stringently, you have to collect uh, collection of multi-layer plastic and then you can use it in waste to energy plant as long as and the cement plant. So, that's, so that should be okay. So I don't think there is any, any other kind of rule which uh, is out there. Uh, what are the some major plastic recycling units in India who are recycling PET, HDPE? Uh, as, as I just mentioned in a few questions back, there are more than 240 or two uh, companies listed uh, as a plastic recycling companies in India for different types of plastic. I'm not sure how many of them are really working and they are pretty much all over India from north to south. Uh, to west as well as to east. Uh, uh, Eastern India I see less, but uh, other places I see quite, quite more. Uh, but uh, still, uh, uh, some of them are not, may not be working right now. 
And uh, but there is, uh, as you say, there is a gap of 44% of waste generation and waste recycling, and that is partly because of uh, it's the it's not being collected properly. It's not only because uh, the uh, treatment. Many times the companies are out there, but they don't get enough plastic to recycle because of uh, it's not coming to their uh, place. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's not collected properly. It's uh, there is a leakage in the system. Uh, as you know, only 60 to 70 percent of municipal solid waste gets collected in India, and plastic waste is part of municipal solid waste. So it's the collection which needs to be improved. Source segregation, if we can improve, we can improve the we can improve the recycling as well. So even if the collected plastic is too dirty, it cannot be recycled. So it ends up in the dump site. So those things needs to be worked into. I hope that uh, answers your question. So uh, with that, uh, let's look at some more questions which come in. Uh, there is one, Shomya Ranjan Bal, what is the problem of multi-layered plastic? Uh, we just talked about that. And the second question is, how contamination percentage measured in imported plastic in contest to China's national short policy? So as you know, it, uh, nine, uh, that policy requires 0.5% contamination. So what does that mean? It means that if you have 100 kg of uh, uh, plastic waste coming into China, it should not have 100 kg, 0.5% will be what, 500 grams. So it should not have more than 500 grams of unwanted material. And that could be dirt, that could be leftover food, that could be anything other than that plastic. So even uh, other material which is, not, uh, which is not plastic will be counted in there. So they will have a, uh, not, they will, uh, as the loads come in, they will have uh, uh, sampling of, uh, like random sampling of certain loads and if, uh, uh, they find that it's more than five percent. The entire load may be rejected. So that's the so that's so that and that has to be tested before it uh, leaves wherever from whichever place it is coming to China, and it is also tested in China as well. So there are two two way testing. So it's uh, uh, so that's that's the way they do it. Uh, uh, Sarat, how plastic can be disposed? The best thing is to recycle, which we talked about in the class quite a bit. If you cannot recycle, use waste to energy at a high temperature, uh, don't produce dioxin and furan, that's why you need high temperature. And then if nothing can be done, then secured engineered landfill will be the place. Next question, the two of them from Mohammed. Uh, what solution do you propose for microplastic already present in marine environment? That's a very, uh, uh, like a, a very tough problem which is out there. Uh, there. People are trying different stuff. They are trying some skimmers, they are trying some uh, even iron particles and uh, they are creating some bugs which will degrade those uh, uh, like a microbes uh, treatment is also going on. Uh, so there is not one solution out there. There are some testing is going on right now. So, we, But at, as of today, we don't have really a uh, good solution to propose because we don't, uh, because it's the problem is so enormous. It's not that uh, getting uh, Getting rid of that, it's, it's because it's spread over such a big area. So it becomes, uh, it's a challenge, operational challenge of managing that plastic. But people are trying different stuff, which includes zero valent iron, iron particle, and also some of these uh, development of certain bacteria, which can uh, degrade those microplastics and all that. Uh, due to, okay, uh, oh, okay, so <laughs> that was... Due to some reason, I have to leave this course in between, even though I was enjoying it. So this is just a request to kindly rerun this course next year. So that would be decision done by IIT Madras NPTEL office. So that's beyond my scope right now. Uh, we'll, hopefully, it will be rerun. I'm not sure. Uh, so next question is from Mr. Rajke Rajput, which we received in the email today. What are the, what are the effective methodology to make more and more volunteers to no use or reduce, reuse, and recycle of plastic? How to start a plastic waste collection and recycling agency, which second part we talked about that in the context of that uh, Uttar Pradesh question. For the first part, what are the effective methodology to make more and more volunteers to no use or reduce, reuse, recycle? Again, it's the, it's the same thing what we do for municipal solid waste as well. You, it's, it has to start from home. If each one of us has to volunteer. It's not volunteer, actually, we have to follow the rules. The rule is already there. Uh, if, we, if we are not following the rule, uh, it's actually we are breaking the rule. We have, uh, and the problem is uh, the system is not in place. We don't have source segregation system in place. Even you and I want to segregate. Uh, there is a separate collection system is not in place in most of the ULBs across country. So what we require of this uh, with this Swachh Bharat mission and all that, there is a lot of uh, education has which already happened in the country. Now this is a high time that we need to really upgrade the infrastructures of ULBs. 
if we don't upgrade the infrastructure of ULBs, this is not going to work because the ULB need to get trucks with partition and, and also train manpower. We need to train the manpower to understand. Many people working in uh, ULBs on the waste management, they don't understand waste management at all. Uh, but this is uh, my experience with uh, visiting several ULBs in India and talking with them. And it's not their fault. It's the problem is they were never trained. They never, t there was a course, there was only maybe t t one week or one and a half week lecture on solid waste management, that's it. And uh, on a, such a vast topic. So it's not the fault of the people working there. It is they were never exposed to this, uh, this kind of training. That's the reason why uh, like we are trying to offer so many courses on waste management on NPTEL so that more and more people at least take some benefit out of that. So that kind of answers those questions which we received earlier. Now we'll start getting into the present questions. So what is, uh, what is the career one can have in the plastic recycling field? So... Again, it's very, and that question comes from Naulesh Kumar. Uh, in terms of career, uh, as I said, there are several plastic recycling companies which uh, would require people who understand plastic recycling. Uh, even uh, plastic becoming is so problem, uh, problematic. Uh, municipal governments, so ULBs require people who understand plastic. Pollution Control Board requires people who understand plastic. Central Pollution Control Board requires people who understand plastic. Consulting companies requires people who can understand plastic waste management. So, and with so much problem out there, not only in India globally, right now, as you know, I think I mentioned in the videos as well, uh, National Geographic is interested in that. Many organizations, you just go on Google and YouTube and say plastic waste, uh, management and you will find several and several videos with different aspects of plastic waste management. Every day, every few days there are newer reports, newer studies are coming up. That's why I told you guys that please share those reports and the stuff that you find to us. It will be a learning experience for us too. And uh, so that's so there is there is a career out there. So it's just uh, you need to find uh, a niche. Only thing I would say that plastic waste just by itself uh, may not get you a career. You need to have a broader uh, become a uh, kind of uh, try to get expertise on in waste management, municipal solid waste, industrial waste, and plastic waste will be part of that. So that way you will be able to sell yourself. Just plastic waste by itself, you may still find a job, but the chances uh, that the choices will be limited. Uh, Sanjeev Kumar uh, talks about that how to start the plastic recycling plant at low level. Uh, again, uh, you can set up, uh, a, you have to first get source aggregated plastic. You can set up a manual sorting system where you uh, remove different types of plastic. Since you're talking about low level, I would say just work with P uh, num uh, PET, HDPE and that easily recyclable plastic that we talked about in the lecture and just focus on that. That itself uh, can uh, get you some market. Only thing is that uh, some of this has already been done in the informal sector, so you will have certain competition there. Uh, but uh, and you have to get the contract from ULBs and industries, institutions to get those kind of plastic uh, to you, so that you can process them, clean them, make the flake, and start recycling them, which we talk about in the recycling. Uh, uh, when we talk about the plastic waste management video, I think that's in week five or week six, if I remember, it's uh, there. So you can look at up that detail there as well. And ag again, any further question, you put that on discussion forum and we'll answer that. Srishti Mishra, how to prepare for certificate exam? Uh, certificate exam, uh, as the exam gets closer, we'll probably, I thought this question will come in the next live session, but it's good that you are since, uh, seriously looking at exam from now. Uh, if you are doing, if you are going through the videos carefully, if you are looking at uh, the PowerPoint that we pr provide them, and if you just do even kind of uh, overview review of the reading material that we have provided to you, there are several of them, so I'm not telling them that you have to read line by line, but just kind of pass through it, look at the big things, uh, uh, important stuff from there. Uh, so with that, uh, that should be good enough and take all the assignments. So that will be, so the final exam will be similar. So you will have, uh, you will not have any problems. So just uh, that would be a way to prepare it. Sakshi Gupta, as we have been reading about microbeads in cosmetic, can we control in India? We can control in India because uh, as long as we put a regulation there uh, to control it. So uh, as you know, like I think uh, if I remember, uh, Canada has banned it uh, already. So and the European Union is looking at banning it too. Some European Union countries are, are looking uh, already in the banning process. So. 
it can be done. We can ban. We can. We don't want to. We can ban this from the cosmetic products uh, so that it doesn't uh, go into our waterways uh, through the wastewater treatment plant. Next, uh, IBIC innovation using plastic in road construction is eco-friendly because burning of plastic is harmful. Also, oh, his question mark is there. Is using plastic in road construction is eco-friendly because burning of plastic. So, what is actually doing? We are not really burning, burning the plastic. We are melting the plastic in that. Uh, we are melting it. We are not uh, burning with uh, fumes coming out. So if you look at the plastic road construction, uh, which uh, uh, will be there in one of the uh, lecture material, I think it's not there. You have not seen it yet. It will come in next week or uh, I think in sixth week or seventh week it will be there. So I want you to look at that uh, we, and you will see that, uh, that that answers your question. It uh, it's gets melted and that uses as a binder. So we are not really burning and creating fumes of plastic out there. So that's why it, it can be done. Uh, all the, so there, of course, there will be issues of uh, some emissions coming out, but it can be controlled. Next, Sanjeev Kumar, how to control emissions of pollutants, gas from plastic burning? Uh, if, if you are talking about uncontrolled burning of plastic, very difficult to control it. So uh, what happened in Cochin uh, recently, uh, I think it was in February 21st or 22nd of uh, 2019. <laughs> Uh, where there are a lot of plastic uh, stored, stored plastic catch on fire in, in the early morning hours and people were suffocating in the, when they woke up and some people while sleeping were having breathing difficulties too. If you have not seen that news, uh, go on Google and put uh, Cochin Plastic Burning February 2019, you will find several news articles. So there, uh, there, that kind of things, it's very difficult to control. It's just the natural by the, uh, well, when it mixes with the wind and everything, it will get diluted and finally it will go away. But, uh, it's, uh, but if you are talking about waste to energy plant, uh, where we are burning, pl burning plastic with other waste components, they, they, they have uh, um, air pollution control systems in place. So that uses them uh, for, uh, so all, any emissions coming out will go through the air pollution control system and that controls the emissions uh, uh, getting into the environment. So that's how it can be controlled. Tanisha Sridhar, uh, how can we recycle plastic at our own level? Uh, it's uh, unless, well, one thing you can do is if you have a, uh, uh, like uh, if, first of all, try to minimize the use of plastic. I will, rather than recycle, I will say reduce. Uh, try to don't use single-use plastic. Uh, many times you can get away with that. Don't use uh, sing, like plastic bottles that you like by Bisleri, Aquafina, and all those uh, Kinlay. Uh, try to use your own bottle wherever you go. Ca carry your own water, and that way you can reduce. That's the that's the thing you can do. Recycling by yourself, you can use the plastic and make some decorative items, or you can uh, use it some artwork and other stuff. But that's limited. Uh, all, and uh, if you, other thing you can do is if you get a good plastic bag, say from uh, departmental stores, uh, reuse it. Uh, don't uh, throw it away and uh, try to, don't use single-use plastic. Whenever you go to grocery uh, shopping, carry your own, own bag so that you don't have to uh, get the potato in that plastic bag or uh, onion in a plastic bag. Use your own bags and then uh, bring your uh, uh, vegetables in that bag. That's the way you can do it. Because recycling, you cannot, each one of us cannot set up a recycling plant at our home. That's totally impractical. So we can only reduce our, our what, what we control is uh, how to buy things, how to, what to buy things. So try to change your lifestyle and use less and less plastic. So that's the way you can contribute. Um, Aku Shekhar Anupama, what steps have to be taken to initial the plastic recycling unit? So we just answered that question that you need to, of course, number one is to get source aggregated plastic, uh, clean it. You have to clean that plastic. You have to go, far. it goes through a certain process. If I think that uh, video, that particular lecture unit has not been online yet. So uh, you will see that there is, there is a good discussion on uh, uh, plastic waste recycling, which, uh, which will, you will see, a, I, th I think, almost a half an hour video where we go step by step on how to do that. And that probably will come in the next week. That's why uh, several questions are coming up in this uh, particular topic. So, uh, and then if in that case, you go through, look at the steps. If still you have questions, uh, you are very, very welcome to put that in the discussion forum. And we'll have another live session, which as you know, in I think middle of April, which is a schedule. So you can, we can talk about it uh, that time as well. 
What is the role of informal sector of plastic waste management in Indian scenario? That's the question from Mr. Ravi Shankar. Uh, so it's uh, informal sector. They play, play play a very big role. They do collect a lot of plastic, especially plastic bottles, plastic containers, and then it gets recycled. So they do the collection job uh, for us, and then they sell it to the recyclers. So that's so they do in terms of collection. They have a lot of uh, role to play. Uh, they don't try to recycle plastic uh, by themselves, they mostly ends up in the plastic recycling unit. Uh, unlike uh, electronic waste where they try to uh, salvage some of those precious metal. Here they buy it uh, from us and then they sell it to the uh, recycling unit through some middleman. Uh, Priyank Sa, in a country like India where awareness regarding responsible disposal of plastic is negligible, how can mixed plastic technology help us in tackling this issue? See, that's awareness regarding to responsible disposal. So that's the, uh, so if, if mixed waste, uh, uh, man, managing mixed waste, so there, is, there is only two things you can do. One thing is you can do the source aggregation at home if we can. Uh, as you are, you are suggesting that it's very difficult because we don't behave in a responsible way and I can understand why you are, like from where you are coming from. It, does, it's, it's, it is difficult and we are seeing that, uh, like I have a first hand experience of that as well. Uh, even in uh, educated community or wealthy community, it's uh, very difficult to get them to source aggregate. Uh, but uh, if if we don't do source aggregate, uh, then our problem becomes a bit more complicated. We have to do segregation at at a city, like bring it to a one particular transfer station or some particular location where we need to separate it out. Unless you separate plastic from other waste stream and they get that plastic clean to a reasonable level, no technology is going to work. And if you, even if you try to use it waste to energy plant and with a lot of dirt material there which reduces the calorific value, so you you are making the process inefficient. So you can go for mixed plastic, uh, uh, you can collect mixed plastic with other waste, separate the plastic out, clean the plastic, uh, plastic there and then put it through the recycling process which we'll talk which is there in the videos uh, I will which you will see if you have in a I think next week you will see those de details of how the recycling is done recycling process works so that's the, then in that case uh, you will uh, end up spending more money so the economics either we set up a collection system where we do the source segregation that also requires money or we do it at uh, after collecting everything that also uh, but if you do it at the source segregation you get a better quality of plastic this contamination is much less. So that's uh, Manish Kumar. Uh, can you give some important questions for exam and the pattern of question paper, whether it is MCQ on writing part? As I, again, as I said, uh, the question uh, that you, if you do the assignments properly, if you are taking the quiz uh, properly, you should not have any problem. You go through the lecture material and exam will be similar to what is there in the quiz. So the similar pattern will be there in the exam. So uh, so if you, as long as you do that, you'll be fine. As giving some important questions, I don't know, like uh, what, imp like everything is important. <laughs> so if you do the quizzes properly, you are okay. And uh, we are here to help you. So uh, if you have any question, all the way, all the way to your exam time, we will be watching. We will have a close watch on the discussion forum, and we'll be ready to answer any question you have. Uh, but as you can understand, we cannot uh, disclose question paper uh, before the exam is held. Uh, next question is from uh, Dor, uh, uh, Mr. Sri, Sri Manoj. Is the same assignment plus question will come in main exam, sir? Uh, it's a lot of questions for exam even now. <laughs> so, uh, is the same way? Similar questions will be there. Similar questions will be there. Of course, uh, as per NPTEL uh, procedure, which probably you also know, there are some questions which will be very similar to quiz. There will be some questions will be slightly different, but yes, similar questions will be there. Uh, Anupama, what kind of projects may be done in the area of plastic waste management by BE students? Uh, uh, there are certain uh, things you can look at the recycling method. You can look at uh, uh, like there is a newer concept of uh, plastic uh, uh, waste to energy. Uh, you can look at uh, plastic waste to energy. We I think in the, co in the during the course I also talk about some of the projects that we are trying to do using plastic as a fuel, using plasto char as a soil amendment, which I kind of talked about in one particular video. So there are ways uh, to you can use that uh, in uh, in in the project. So if you can, uh, uh, so that's kind of what I will say. There are uh, uh, 
And then you can also look at, uh, if you want to look at plastic waste in a systems perspective, you can try to do some life cycle analysis and stuff there as well. Looking at biodegradable plastic versus traditional plastic, which one are calculating their environmental footprint. So these are some which are coming to my head right now, but there could be so several others out there. Uh, again, uh, I think uh, Rudri Vedya, identification of plastic is a big problem. Uh, so micro Raman spectroscopy is used for this. Is the technology available in India, especially Gujarat? I have no idea. I, I like I have no idea because I'm sitting in West Bengal. If the if this particular technology available in Gujarat, you have to kind of do some homework and find out. Uh, Raman spectroscopy in a lab scale, of course, it will be there. But uh, in an industrial scale, whether it is there or not, I, I assume if it's anywhere in India, it would be in Gujarat because Gujarat and Maharashtra, those are the most, uh, and Tamil Nadu, those are kind of most industrialized area of the country. So my guess would be that if it, if it is there anywhere in India, it might be there. Uh, but I'm not really 100% sure. So you need to look at some of the homework on that. Uh, uh, Kanchan Priya, could we use the landfill dumped waste as a filler material in geo, geo cellular system? So I think you're talking about can be landfill dump material will be used as a uh, filler material. Uh, you're talking, uh, I think you, if you can repeat that question, uh, put it again, we'll, we'll, uh, as I understand you're talking about whether the landfill dumped waste can be used as a daily cover or something. It depends what kind of waste is there. Uh, if I understood your question correctly, if not, then uh, it can be used uh, depending on, but you have to do, you have to characterize the waste to look at what kind of material present so that uh, your leachate doesn't become a problem. But uh, if I didn't understood your question, I request you to please rephrase that we are still online and we'll be able to answer that. What is the difference between plastic and solid waste? Uh, solid waste is a bigger term uh, that it, uh, the, from the question, this is coming from Manish Kumar. It uh, looks like you have not taken a solid waste course, so I would encourage you to take one because that solid waste is the big, which includes plastic, paper, glass. A solid, it, solid waste is a bigger arm. Within that, we have municipal solid waste, we have industrial waste, and there are other types of waste, agricultural waste, mining waste. Municipal solid waste is where or uh, you will see plastics coming from the houses, paper, glass, metals, food waste. All these are part of the municipal solid waste. Plastic can come from other sources too. So solid waste is a big umbrella. Within that, uh, plastic waste will come. So that's, uh, so plastic waste is a subset of solid waste. Uh, Sri, Ma Sri Mati, uh, plastic roads and plastic eating bacteria, both are there on the project on plastic road. Both are there. So the project on plastic road is effective and plastic eating bacteria is there. Plastic eating bacteria usually you will not have on roads. Uh, plastic eating bacteria, we are creating them because when even if the plastic eating bacteria is there in the road, as you know, uh, with the bitumen, it, it, the plastic gets encapsulated. So plastic is there inside and then bitumen is putting a layer around it. So even if it's there, it will be, bacteria will not be able to go and eat because there is a layer around which is impervious layer which bacteria cannot penetrate through. So that's the reason you will not uh, uh, see them uh, being affecting the plastic roads. Uh, but uh, plastic eat eating bacteria we are trying to create. Uh, preparation tips for plastic waste management course, reading the lecture material is enough sir. Okay, again, I think it's for the exam. Yes, uh, you go through the lecture material, go through the PDF uh, and uh, listen to the videos carefully if needed again and again. And then uh, uh, those uh, the supplemental reading material that we have provided, if you can just go through that, uh, not even you don't have to read line by line, at least go through so that you get some idea of what is in there, that should be good enough. Akash Kumar, is there any solution other than recycle? Uh, Recycle is the best solution. Uh, re for number one would be reduction. If you can reduction, uh, if you can reduce the waste, that is the best. If you cannot reduce the waste, then recycle. And uh, so reduction, uh, source reduction, where you don't use single-use plastic, you don't use plastic bottles, you use reusable bottle, reusable mug, and so that you uh, reduce the amount of plastic waste that is being produced. That's the number one choice as any waste management hierarchy. The second one after that is uh, recycling. And if you cannot, re the recycling uh, is preferable. If not, 
then you try to go for ways to energy and it with a proper air pollution control. If that also doesn't work for certain type of plastic, at the end you can go for uh, uh, secured landfill, engineered landfill where at least you are keeping it in a secured environment so that it doesn't go and uh, creates problem uh, kind of a leakage into the environment. Next question from Kanchan Priya, uh, since collecting is difficult for an urban area, can we have some communal recycling plant? We can, we, there can be a decentralized system. In fact, in the municipal solid waste, that's one, one area where uh, entire world is looking at the collection cost. Uh, the collection cost is so huge. So the trucks moving around the whole city collecting garbage. So there is a uh, provision of can we do certain things in a decentralized way. Again, you have the question is economy of a scale. You have to make sure you have plant which is economically viable. When you have low amount of waste, that many times doesn't work because you will have to have certain systems in place. All the equipment has to be in place. You have to have manpower to run it. So whatever the money you will generate and whatever money goes into that, what is your break-even time, all those things uh, break even for that uh, return, uh, return of investment, that ROI, uh, you have to look at all that. Uh, uh, but yes, it can be done uh, if it's possible, especially for food waste and other stuff uh, for anaerobic digestion, biogas plant, people are looking at uh, source segregated plants in great detail. What type of plastic we use in manufacturing of BICs? How will we do it? Uh, it's actually wherever I have seen they are using a mixed plastic, uh, uh, whatever plastic is there which is not recyclable. So they are using it together, they are compressing it. We have some pictures of that. Uh, we will try to put it on the discussion forum with a link as a PDF file. So you will be able to see that uh, how the manufacturing process is done. And uh, so you can get an idea. This picture actually comes from uh, Amrita Hospital in uh, Cochin. And if you are near that area, you, I would say go and visit them. They have a small plant, not a big plant. They just do it for their own uh, on use within their own campus. But we have some pictures, so we will put that in a PDF and, and uh, put it on discussion forum for you to see that. Uh, at institute level, how can we recycle plastic waste? Again, Ragini Kumari, uh, it's uh, a... Again, uh, you cannot really recycle like it much in your institute level because say institute, uh, I'm talking about as an educational institute. I think you're talking about educational institute. Educational institutes are designed for, uh, uh, for the teaching research and those kind of purposes. We are not a waste management place. So we have to tie up with some company to do it. So you cannot really do much. You can do, again, you can do some uh, decorative item. You can do some... Uh, artwork and other stuff, but those are limited. That's no, you cannot do that too much. So first of all, if you can reduce the plastic waste that is being produced, try to go for non-alternative uh, material, which we'll talk about in this lecture. Uh, in this week seven, you will see the alternatives to plastic. What are the different alternatives to use? So that is there. So I would suggest uh, you, after you watch week seven, you look at what are the, that would be the focus. Use alternative products. Don't use plastic, uh, especially single use plastic. So that's where you can help. But otherwise at institute level, you cannot really do much. Ashutosh Arya, if we design a device which helps in proper distribution of waste in the desired bin uh, basis of color, then how this is beneficial to us by economical point of view? Uh, that you're talking about source aggregated bin. There are certain bins are coming out there. Some bins, they call themselves as a smart bin uh, where you can have basis of color. If uh, color only for plastic, it will add, it will increase. If you're talking about only for plastic, you can separate plastic with different colors. That will add value. Uh, the, your plastic, uh, recyclable plastic waste, the value will increase. So you will make more money out of that. But of course, you have set up a system in place, so that costs you some money too. So you have to do that uh, optimization. You have to look at your uh, which one works. So yeah, if you can come up with a system, it will be it will help. It will uh, if you could will help in source segregation, and uh, your economics. You have to look at uh, how much extra investment that goes into making those, and how much extra uh, revenue you will get. So you have to do that uh, uh, stuff uh, calculation. Priyank Shah, there is a Pune-based organization going by the name Rudra Foundation. They convert plastic to fuel at commercial level, which is almost uh, same calorific value as petrol. Then why doesn't government look into it? I think they are doing some business uh, at certain places. In fact, uh, I have met these people uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in Hyderabad uh, or in Chennai uh, just a few weeks back. 
So they are uh, going for this plastic to oil. Again, these they are coming up with, uh, they are doing it in a small plants, they are working and uh, they are trying to go big scale. So government, uh, we cannot say the government is not looking into it. So it, just that it's a company, they have to come up with a product, they have to go uh, and approach the you know, ULBs and get the plastic waste and come make the oil and sell it. So I don't know where the government will come in picture here. Uh, the government can only give them the projects when they bid. So if they bid for the project, government uh, will definitely look into it based on, uh, only thing is that uh, it requires clean plastic as well. So if uh, that is uh, there. Why plastic is not affected by microorganisms? The question is from Sanjay Patel. So I think he's talking about that uh, fossil fuel based plastic, uh, which is uh, not the biodegradable one. So fossil fuel based, the traditional plastic, the, the, it's, it's not biodegradable. So it's not biodegradable, so microorganisms cannot affect it. Although some recent research, recently there was a news article in BBC World almost five, six months back, and I think that paper is there in Nature or Science, either of those two journals, that uh, people, uh, there's some researchers in Hawaii, uh, they were doing some work in Hawaii, and they have identified certain bacterial strain, which is degrading uh, fossil fuel-based plastic as well. So, but this is just some bacteria has been identified, but we don't, uh, uh, we don't know um, uh, that, like uh, there is in general for fossil fuel based plastic, uh, we don't, uh, it's the reason they are uh, so stable, the reason plastic is so popular because it does not biodegrade. Once you have some plastic product, it can last for a long period of time. That's the reason it is being used. So since they are not biodegradable, they, uh, they, their property is, uh, is such that they are not biodegradable, so microorganisms cannot affect them. Akhil Sarat, uh, difference between oxo-degradable, biodegradable and compostable plastic bag? That's a very good question actually. Uh, so compostable pro plastic bag, as you said, it's, uh, it, is, uh, it, it should be composted in the regular compost plant that uh, you and I set up in our house or in a compost plant for a city. Biodegradable plastic... It is biodegradable, but may not be compostable. So it will it will biodegrade, but it will take a longer period to biodegrade. It may not really compost. Uh, it will get into a compost uh, uh, regular compost plant. It requires a specific condition to get biodegraded. Oxo degradable. They are actually they are again. Uh, it's it's a oxo degradable, uh, which also I saw in one of the. Indian, uh, one of our domestic carrier airlines where uh, the cutleries and other things were being given oxo degradable. It's more of a marketing uh, gimmick. Oxo degradable plastic, again, it's, it can be degradable only in a certain conditions. So they are not uh, biodegradable ones. So oxo degradable is, uh, it's not, uh, it's under, it, they under certain conditions, uh, it can be oxidized, uh, uh, but uh, it's more like a chemical degradation. Biodegradable is uh, which can biodegrade, but may take longer period of time. Compostable is which you can should be composted with uh, food waste and other stuff. Uh, the next question, Sanjay Patel, why film is harmful for sewage? Uh, film, I think you are talking about uh, plastic film, that uh, thin plastic, if I understood correctly. Uh, thin plastic, uh, they are, because when they uh, get into the sewage treatment plant, of course, they will choke the system. And then when it gets degraded, when the, it uh, gets degraded, it becomes, it takes the form of uh, microplastics. And those microplastics could be uh, bad for microorganisms as well. So that's the uh, reason why those film plastic is bad for the sewage uh, treatment plant. Film plastics are also bad for our stormwater collection system. Uh, it uh, chokes all the stormwater collection drains. And uh, film plastic is, of course, uh, not good for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, cows and other stuff eating it and getting into their body, which you saw uh, in certain videos, uh, put several plastic in the cow's body. And also recently one whale with 40 kg of plastic, if you have not seen it. I hope that most all of you are looking at uh, news related to plastic waste uh, uh, for uh, different... Uh, uh, like a plastic waste uh, uh, related news and articles which is coming on uh, every other day on the web on so in social media sites. Uh, Sri Mati again, project on plastic road is there, but we are having plastic eating bacteria. So if we increase the quantity of bacteria, then the project of plastic road will get fail on doing plastic road is, is effective. 
So why, like, uh, if we are using plastic road, we will, why we will increase plastic eating bacteria in that area? So we don't want to increase plastic eating bacteria. As I said uh, in the previous answer, plastic eating bacteria will not have access to that plastic because uh, this in the plastic road, in the plastic road, this the, the plastic which is there, which is melted plastic, it is there, and the, if, the, if this is the melted plastic which is there with all the uh, aggregates, we have a layer of bitumen on top. So this layer of bitumen does not allow this bacteria, even if it's present, to get into my plastic. So it's uh, not available to them uh, for eating them up. So that's why it will not affect. Uh, that's the, so it's still plastic. Uh, you can use uh, those plastic in the plastic road. Ashutosh Arya, I think uh, he cl clarified on some questions. Like color means color of dustbin. Therefore, biodegradable, non-biodegradable, microplastic, microplastic, glass, metals. Uh, you can put color coded, but the problem is people don't follow. Uh, uh, like uh, I have seen, I have pictures of all the big uh, airports in India. Now, if you go to any airport, uh, most of the Indian airports has three-way bin. Some places two-way, but most of the places three-way. Bangalore had four-way. Uh, four-way means they have uh, different containers for for plastic, glass, and paper, and food waste. And, uh, and these are like different categories. And you go and just take a picture from the top and you will see all the four bins have the same material. It mixed. So although the bins are nicely done and uh, the government has uh, like an airport authority or whichever is running the company, that these days most of the uh, these airports are being run by private companies. Uh, so they, they are running it, uh, they are putting all the system in place, but people like you and me are not following the rules. And uh, even at, say, airports, usually I would expect much better performance at railway stations because uh, so-called uh, educated people travel more by aeroplane. But I, that's why I said so-called educated. Degree doesn't give you education. Uh, degree only gives you a degree, a piece of paper. <laughs> so, uh, so that's uh, even at uh, the airports, I see that it's totally mixed up. So you can set it up, but the problem is people don't follow the rule. And uh, it's, it's the mindset that needs to change. The behavior aspect needs to change. And there has to be fine. And there has to be a lot of awareness program, uh, which many countries do, like uh, which we talk about in the video as well. Uh, there are a lot of awareness program is needed to tell people why not following this source segregation is bad for us. For each one of us, it's bad. And how it is going to affect our health. So those things, awareness needs to be uh, there. So uh, with that, I think uh, we will. Uh, uh, I think uh, we'll be able to answer uh, your questions. If uh, some of the answers, if uh, it was not, if there was certain confusion in the question or anything, you just let us know in the discussion forum. We'll clarify that, and we will have another session uh, of uh, online uh, live session in uh, in the month of April. I think it's in the third week of April, in the beginning of third week. So meanwhile, enjoy the course, uh, uh, put your questions on the discussion forum and be active. It's good that many of you came online and we had good discussion. So looking forward to similar discussion on the discussion forum as well as during the next live session. All the best. Don't worry too much about the exam. It will be okay. Thank you.